Yeah, so we're very happy to have Nara Engelhardt from MIT. She's going to tell us about canonical purification of evaporating black holes. Thank you so much, Nara. All right. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, I really thought that this by now we'd be doing this in person, um, but you know maybe next semester. <laughs> Assuming you guys want to have me again. Um, so. Uh, okay, so, the, so this is based on a paper that came out recently with my student Osmond Folkestad, and also and there's not not all of this is in the paper. Some of it is somewhat more speculative thoughts that I feel more comfortable sharing in a talk than uh, than I do in the uh, in a paper. Now, when I was uh, when I was writing up this uh, this paper, we were writing it together. Um, it was uh, unfortunate. It was you know trying to find out that original reference on canonical purification. And sort of you Google that, and uh, you know, I was expecting some old physics papers, and actually, what you end up coming up with is a bunch of papal references um, for canonical purification. So this is uh, obviously not in that context, but in the physics context. But you know, I still have not been able to figure out what's the original reference for canonical purification, um, other than you know the a Catholic rite. So uh, without further ado, um, let me just get into the meat of the talk. Okay, so. Oh. Back up. All right. So the general theme here is uh, something that we've seen a lot in uh, in ADS CFG, uh, space time from entanglement. This is the kind of slogan that we uh, we we you know we wave it around a lot. We write it in our grant proposals, um, and we mean different things. Uh, different people mean different things by this slogan. So part of the purpose of this talk is to try to clarify um, what we. What 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 things what aspects of space time from entanglement are robust? Um, what aspects of space time from entanglement are probably wrong, and what things we still have to figure out? Uh, and of course, it's not it's not going to be a comprehensive answer uh, to this uh, to all of those questions. Now, again, the general expectation, starting with work, uh, well, in, ADA, in a case context of ADS CFT, starting with work from uh, Mark van Ramstrong, is that there's a sense in which entanglement builds space time. And this is related, of course, to uh, Ryu Takinagi, Hubei Kagamani Takinagi, et cetera, holographic entanglement entropy. And of course, it's realized very beautifully in certain uh, specific examples. So thermofield double corresponds to Schwarzschild. We have this entangled state, and we have a beautiful space-time bridge in between. We also have more uh, general examples of reconstruction, re reconstruction of the metric in the space-time from uh, Ryu Takenagi surfaces. There's a class of examples where this works. Sometimes you can even get the bulk equations of motion from, um, from the just knowing what the HRT surfaces are. So again, there's a, there's, certainly, there's a sense in which this is certainly correct. There's another conjecture, uh, in some sense more precise and in some sense less precise, which is ER equals EPR. And the idea there is that order one over G Newton entanglement also build space time, create space time wormholes. And of course, this is particularly relevant and was made in connection with the evaporating black hole and the firewall problem. Given the, the relevance of this for evaporating black holes, it's very natural to ask whether the recent developments, and by now I guess not so recent, developments dating back to 2019, but have been going on for the past three years, um, whether those can help us shed light on these vague expectations and make them more precise. These expectations that entanglement builds space time and uh, ER equals EPR. So I'm going to distinguish between entanglement builds space time and ER equals EPR. Now, this is, in some sense, this should be a build your own adventure type of thing where you can decide what you mean by that. And you know, all, all opinions are valid, um, but I'm going to try to explain what I mean by entanglement build space time, what I mean by ER equals EPR, and which versions of these we can argue for or against. So first, I'm going to talk about this expectation, the slogan, uh, entanglement build space time. And here's one, one way of framing it, certainly not the only way, which is that if there's enough entanglement in some bipartite state, psi AB, and there are marginals, rho A and rho B, each have a semi-classical gravitational bulk description, then the bulk dual to psi AB is a connected wormhole, or connected in general. So that's that's one expectation. And um, I'll be discussing in this talk whether we expect whether this is actually true or not in certain examples. 
The second expectation, which again, I'll distinguish from the first, is uh, ER equals EPR, which I'm going to frame it in this way. I think every, every time I talk to someone about, about ER equals EPR, they have another way of thinking about it. So uh, by all means, if there's another way of thinking about it, you're welcome to think of it that way. This is what I'm going to mean by it in this talk, that if there's enough entanglement in some bipartite state, psi AB, then there exists a factorized unitary, UA tensor UB, such that the factorized unitary acting on psi AB admits some semi-classical gravitational connected description. Uh, so this is just uh, one way of thinking about ER equals EPR. And of course, this is very well motivated by the thermal field double and is dual the Schwarzschild black hole. Now, this talk, as I mentioned in the title, is about evaporating black holes. So we're going to be particularly interested in the predictions of these two expectations for black hole evaporation. And one of the few very precise predictions or somewhat precise predictions in the original um, Cool Horizons for Entangled Black Holes paper is this prediction for black hole evaporation, which is that for if you're after the page time, if you have an old black hole, then there exists a unitary that acts only on the radiation and it maps it to another black hole that's connected to the old black hole via some einstein rosen bridge. So we would like to ask if there is a precise way in which this is realized and we can actually give an algorithm for realizing this prescription or if there's some kind of a counterexample. So how do we go about realizing it? Well, um, we could say, let's throw the radiation into the other side. This is something that we hear a lot. But of course, if you have a single side of black hole, there's no other side. So where are you supposed to be uh, throwing the radiation into? Um, you could imagine gluing something at the event horizon. And I suspect this is what uh, Juan and Lenny intended when they wrote the e original e ER equals EPR paper. But of course, in, in ADS CFT, gluing something at the event horizon doesn't necessarily amount to a factorizing unitary. You know, the causal wedge is something complicated that we don't understand that well in, ge in general cases. So can we realize this? Maybe, maybe not. It's not entirely clear how. Uh, another option is to collapse the radiation into a black hole. This was uh, suggested by Mark Van Ramstong. And, but then, and then the conjecture is that that black hole is connected to the old black hole by an ERB. But this is not a proof that an ERB forms in general and also doesn't explain how, it's, it, how it actually forms. It just says, here's one way of potentially creating one. And another question, I'm just throwing a lot of questions out there right now. Uh, even if it's possible to collapse the radiation into a black hole, are there many ways of collapsing it so that some black holes are connected to the old black hole, but some are not? If you collapse it into a black hole, do we have to do that in a some particular fine-tuned way in order to create an ERB or will just about any process do? So these are all questions that we would like to answer because this slogan that we wave around of entanglement builds spacetime and ER equals EPR has, uh, well, it's, it's very central to a lot of what we do in ADS CFT. So there has been some recent progress on this front and there have been some interesting connections between these recent developments on um, black hole evaporation and reproducing the page curve and ER equals EPR. So I would say that the investigation kind of got started by uh, Anderson, Parker, and Sony, and there have been a, lot of, a number of follow-ups and some earlier work by Bala Subramanian and friends. And it's the, this is, it's somewhat limited in scope, but it's kind of uh, optimistic. So they assume that they have a, a bad CFT plus the radiation and they assume it's holographic. So that already is somewhat restrictive. They worked with certain specific models, um, it's instituted very explicit coupling, um, two bulk dimensions. Again, these are limited results, but they were consistent with ER equals EPR. So as entanglement increases, they found that some ERB forms, so the space-time becomes connected. Um, there have been other, other sort of toy examples where this worked. Um, the doubly holographic model, you know, it appears to have space-time connecting the uh, the the bath um, to the radiation. So this there appears to be good, somewhat somewhat good evidence for this, but it's been uh, it's fairly restricted in uh, in scope, in applicability each time. You have to assume that the the, the bath is holographic, which is which is a strong assumption, or the radiation is holo the, the radiation is holographic, or the CFT in the bulk the bulk effective field there is holographic. So the one of the goals of this talk is to give a prescriptive procedure that's going to work in general or alternatively found counterexamples. 
So what do we what do we find? Sort of a, a preview if you choose to tune out for the rest of the talk. So we do have a precise realization of this post page prediction of ER equals EPR for fairly general states as long as they satisfy the quantum extremal surface prescription. So that's uh, that's sort of a, a check mark on the ER equals EPR prediction after the page time. Now. On the other hand, we also find explicit holographic semi-classical space times that have well-behaved CFT duals and a large amount of bipartite entanglement, but no einstein rosen bridge. So um, this isn't necessarily a problem for ER equals EPR because there there is this caveat about the factorizing unitary, but it does seem to be a bit of a puzzle for the paradigm that entanglement necessarily builds space time whenever you have some semi-classical description of the state. And then I'll spend a decent chunk of the talk sort of speculating on what can actually diagnose space-time connectivity, given that I think, at least from my perspective, I had assumed until quite recently that it was always going to be a large amount of von Neumann entropy um, and the existence of a semi-classical dual. And this appears to we appear to have these counterexamples that say that it's something else. Something else has to diagnose space-time connectivity. The von Neumann entropy is not quite sufficiently fine-grained for that. Uh, Neta? So, so, yeah. Before you get started, uh, can you will you say more about what you mean by a large amount of entropy? I mean, order one over G Newton, but um, yes, I can I can say, I, I, I will, I mean, I'll, I'll talk more quantitatively, but I do mean order one over G Newton. Okay. And then my other question is just so, so I can sort of orient myself relative to uh, what Juan always said when I asked him about ER equals EPR. Uh, so what he would say is that after the page time, you can you can collect the radiation that's already been emitted and form a black hole of it. And mm -hmm. let's not worry about the fact that we have to make the black hole, uh, you know, this has to be an adiabatic process. The black hole shouldn't be larger than uh, in entropy than this radiation, but that um, but that this would allow us to to prepare a thermal field double state. And and then you know sort of by definition or by the assumption of the usual duality, that means that it's now two black, two connected black holes. Right. So so, I mean, I, I know that Juan likes to say this, and I think the general, um, the general perspective there is is realized here, but it's not it's not exactly the thermal field double, um, and mm -hmm. it's it, this. I would say that this this fills in the details on how you're actually supposed to do that. How do you implement this map? And it, it, the fact that we don't have to deal with this adiabatic process, it's not actually the thermal field double, it's some highly mixed state. Um, it is two-sided, it does have a relatively short wormhole, but it's not actually exactly the thermal field double because we're not actually exactly in the thermal state to all, to, to all orders. So does that mean you find, in particular, you find some precise obstruction to doing what he was proposing? Uh, no, because again, with ER equals EPR, you could, okay, so, so actually, sorry, let me, let me take that back. Um, so what he was proposing is to actually obtain exactly the thermal field double from this. And I think, as you, as you say, you actually do need to talk about this adiabatic process. You need to let the black hole somehow settle. Maybe you look at it at late times and it looks like the thermal field double. We actually, we look at it, we, we don't, we don't have to deal with that. We look at it at right after the page time. Um, can we just immediately see that there is a connected black hole that's related to the radiation, related to the original system, just by acting with a factorized unitary that only acts on the radiation. So, um, so it, I would say this precise realization is not extremely surprising, but it would have been very difficult to implement before the, the discovery that there's a non-trivial QES, because it would be, if, if we're talking about entanglement wedges, then entanglement wedge, you know, before we realized there was a new QES and there, the entanglement wedge of a single sided black hole is the entire black hole. So how are you supposed to act with a factorizing unitary on the radiation and get something that's connected to it that's inextendable? Um, so and this, this sort of helps. answers that question. Yeah, yeah that helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, maybe this is a good opportunity to say mm -hmm. it. Uh, um, you said it's uh, not exactly thermal field double, but it should be almost thermal field double anyway. Right? Yeah, almost. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very close to it. Okay. All right. So 
Now I'm going to um, to review the evaporating black holes. I know some of you have probably seen this way too many times. I just want to establish some notation here. So I'll try to breeze through this fairly quickly. So here we have the um, JT plus CFT setup of the black hole evaporating into the bath. We couple the bath to it dynamically. Uh, I'm going to talk about the dynamical case where we institute the coupling at some time and we'll let the black hole evaporate, not the case where we have uh, everything at equilibrium and always coupled. And what we see here is, so here we have this reservoir, the radiation uh, moving into the reservoir. This is the old quantum extremal surface. And after the page time, this is the new quantum extremal surface, and we have a gap between the two. Similarly, uh, Jeff had the same basic phenomenon, uh, also in higher dimensions for single-sided black holes, which will be somewhat more important in this talk, where even though previously for a before we, it, it, the sort of the lore before was that there is no non-trivial quantum extremal surface in the single-sided black hole. Uh, now we find that there is one. And this, uh, this QES is what tells us how much of the black hole it can be reconstructed from this uh, lower dimensional CFT and how much of it is encoded in the fine-grained microscopic state of the radiation. So I'm going to, I want to establish notation here that I'm going to be using throughout this talk. That's really the, uh, the main reason for this review. So the lower dimensional CFT, which in the JT setup, I'll often referred to as the quantum dot, I'll call, I'll call that a row BH for black hole. And if we have two-sided black hole, row BHL, uh, row BHR. So capital letters will refer to the, uh, the microscopic picture here. And then there's the fine-grained bath, the one that's uh, dual to the, the to, that, is, that contains information about both the radiation and the island, which I'll call uh, row rad. Again, capital letters are AD. So this is, here is an example where we have um, Rho BHL and Rho BHR, and then we have the bath Rho Rad. Again, this is the microscopic state. We also have the bulk perspective. The boundary perspective has only, uh, I should, only either uh, two or three, sorry, two or three regions. Two, if you have a two-sided black hole, oh, sorry, three, if you have a two-sided black hole, Rho BHL, Rho BHR, Rho Rad. Or if you have a single-sided black hole, it'll just be Rho BH and Rho Rad. The bulk has one more region because of the island. So we have the entanglement wedge of the left CFT, uh, which is empty in single-sided black holes. So that's entanglement wedge of the left CFT, rho BHL. There's the region between the old QES and the new QES, which is the island. So in the case of the, um, of the black hole, which is single-sided, that's this region over here. So lower case is used for the bulk. The region between the new QES and the asymptotic ADS boundary, so that's the entanglement wedge of the, the right CFT for evaporating the right CFT, or if we only have one, then it's just rho BH. So, and then we have the region, this asymptotic region here, which is the radiation, and again, that'll be lowercase rad. So this is in the situation where we have a single-sided black hole, we have these three regions, these two are both the entanglement wedge of rho capital rad. So here's another picture here. So the, these are the, just the, the bulk quantities. This is the state of the island, the state of the old black hole, the state of the radiation um, in this region here. And again, for two-sided black hole, we have rho BHL and rho BHR. And of course we have rho rad and rho I of the island. Okay, so some universal features pre-page time. So before the page time, the quantum extremal surface that defines the uh, entanglement wedge for, uh, for rho BH and rho rad is approximately going to be the classical extremal surface. So if black hole is single-sided, that's going to be the empty set. So if we're looking at Cauchy slices of the entanglement wedges of rho BH and rho rad, before the page time for single-sided black hole, this is going to be the, the Cauchy slice of the entanglement wedge for rho capital BH. And this will be a Cauchy slice of the entanglement wedge for rho uh, capital rad. So this, of course, is not going to be a pure state once we've started uh, evaporating the black hole. Neta? Yeah. It's it's rho lowercase bh that is not pure, right? Um, it is well, okay. So it, it, neither of them is pure because you're also with a uh, couple. We've coupled the two, so now rho capital bh is also oh, is also coupled to. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Now, after the page time, 
the quantum extremal surface is going to be, uh, it's not going to be a few Planck lengths away from the old classical HRT surface. The QES is, uh, so in the, um, in the single side of black hole, it's going to be sitting, it's, it's going to be non-trivial, which is already very far from the empty set. And what's uh, critical, what's going to be critical for us is that the entanglement wedge of rho capital BH is no longer uh, a complete Cauchy slice of the bulk. So in particular, that means that the Cauchy slice of the entanglement wedge of rho capital BH is not inextendable anymore. And of course, this in, this in turn means that we have this, uh, this island region over here. So this, this, this phenomenon that the entanglement wedge for single-sided black hole went from inextendable to extendable is, uh, is really the critical feature for us here. And so Anna, I'm going to, yeah. Could you go back one slide? Uh, could you go back one slide? Oh, one slide, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, um, you said the entanglement wedge of rho BH contains a Cauchy slice. Is that supposed to be the blue line on this figure? That's right, yeah. So I'm confused in, in what sense we should think of this as a Cauchy slice, just because the boundary conditions are no longer reflecting at infinity. So I would think that I would only get, you know, uh, some diamond in the bulk from the blue line that goes up to the singularity. Good, that, that's correct. So the important thing here is, I, I, and you, you caught me on this, I shouldn't say the entanglement wedge is inextendable, I should say the Cauchy slice is inextendable. Mm, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the entanglement wedge, wedge is extendable, but yeah. All right, so here I'm going to pose a hypothesis, which I think is very reasonable, which at this point is uh, supported by a lot of evidence, uh, which is that in general, after the page time, we expect uh, in fairly broad generality that old black holes have a new dominant QES. This is a sort of central hypothesis for this talk, and it's true in certain, in many cases. Maybe it's not always true, in which case everything I say, any broad statements I make should be taken to be um, under this assumption. So this is the this is going to be in some sense uh, an assumption here, at least for the discussion before the page, uh, discussion after the page time. Neta? Yeah. If I may comment briefly. I think this follows from the island finder argument that Arvid and I published. Uh, yes. I, I, so this is definitely. Um, uh, let me put it this way. I don't want to make any assumptions about um, entanglement of gravitons or any other you know complications. So I'm going to assume this, but you're right. I think if we if we take your island finder and we just apply it, it should give us exactly this. So I, I agree with that. Okay, so the, the, the way that we're going to be um, generating all of the examples and statements is going to be using the, uh, the canonical purification. So let me talk a little bit about um, canonical purification and the holographic procedure for canonical purification. So, um, so what do we want? We're looking for a prescriptive algorithm that's going to realize ER equals EPR after the page time. And we're looking to work in holography. So here is an observation. There's going to, if there's a non-trivial dominant QES after the page time, then it's possible to purify rho BH by exchanging the island plus the radiation for a second asymptotic boundary in a single connected bulk. And uh, we know, or strongly hypothesize, relying on Raphael's work with Arvin, that there's always going to be a non-trivial QES after the page time. So here's the, uh, the schematic. We say, OK, we have some non-trivial QES after the page time. We're going to throw out the radiation. No, not throw out. We're going to take the trace out the radiation in row i. I'm going to say, OK, well, now what we can do, because it's a non-trivial QES here, is we're free to add a second boundary and consider that an alternative purification of the state. Before we, when we didn't have a non-trivial QES, when entanglement wedge was in, when the Cauchy slice of the entanglement wedge was inextendable, this is not something that we could have done. But now that we, that the Cauchy slice of the entanglement wedge is extendable, we can extend it to a second boundary. So under assumption of unitarity, the full microscopic state is pure, so rho rand obtained from trace of uh, BH over the full microscopic state. We have some purification of this. It's going to be unitarily related to the state of the radiation. And so the question is, is there going to be some general CFT procedure 
that gives us this, this state, this purifying state, which has a semi-classical dual, where again, we can just act with you red. And I mean, I put in the identity here for concreteness in principle, you could imagine having another, a different unitary there. Where this thing has a connected two boundary semi-classical bulk dual. And that is where the canonical purification comes in. So what's the canonical purification? Um, so some people here at Berkeley have, uh, have worked on this extensively, some have not, so I'll give a very brief uh, introduction. So uh, canonical purification is sort of a generalization of the way that we uh, get the thermophile double from the Gibbs state. So we start with the Gibbs state and we can purify this by doubling the Hilbert space and getting the thermophile double, here it is. And of course, we know uh, that this gives us the complete maximally extended for shield ADS black hole. A lot of our intuitions about entanglement building space time are based off of this. So canonical purification in general is really just a simple generalization of this procedure, it just works more generally for any mixed state. You take some density matrix in a diagonal basis, with some Hilbert space, you double the Hilbert space, and you define this canonical purification pure state in the doubled Hilbert space. And so this is its definition. Uh, we can sort of crudely think of this as flipping bras to cats. This is essentially the, the protocol for getting the canonical purification. And if you trace out the new degrees of freedom, you'll just get the old state back. So this is just a, a simple generalization of what we do to go from the Gibbs state to the thermal field up. And this has a well understood holographic dual, both to leading orders classically and also to subleading orders semi classically. So, uh, to leading order, we are given some CFT state and some mixed state row. And we know it has some classical bulk dual. I'll say uh, more about the semi classical case momentarily. So, we have some uh, HRT surface, initial data on this Cauchy slice. How do we construct the canonical purification of this? Well, the canonical purification is given by the CPT conjugation of this around the HRT surface. So we can CPT conjugate this around the HRT surface. We get a new chunk of space time that I've denoted with tildes. And then we just take this and we glue it together at the HRT surface. So here is the gluing. And so this, these, are two, these are meant to be the two different surfaces. We identify them as the same surface and we evolve this initial data slice and we get the, the new space time. And this is, uh, this is particularly simple. Uh, it relies on GR gluing constraints being mostly trivial at this surface because the, the mean curvature of the, an extremal surface vanishes. So this is a uh, fairly simple construction in the purely classical case. Now, if you want to include uh, quantum corrections, so this work was done by Raphael, Van, and Arvin. So at that point, you, you still do a CPT conjugation, but you do it around the quantum extremal surface. And um, the quantum extremal surface doesn't have a vanishing expansion in general. So in general, you will need a shock at the quantum extremal surface in order to make the different expansions match up across the junction. So again, it's the same procedure. We take this entanglement wedge, CPT conjugate, but again, now, now you're going to incur uh, a shock because the, the thetas, the expansions of the surface, the classical expansions don't vanish. It's the quantum expansion that generically vanishes. Okay, so that's the canonical purification and that's the tool that we're going to, to use to, uh, to try to make some of these expectations, entanglement, build space time, ER equals EPR, uh, more precise. Why, why do the quantum expansion vanish while the classical bell? So the quantum expansion vanishes by definition this, uh, uh, of the quantum uh, extremal surface. Okay. Uh, but the classical expansion doesn't have to, there's nothing uh, forcing the classical expansion of a quantum extremal surface to be zero. Generically, it won't be. So we have to deal with the, with the junction conditions. Does that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get to the, the, the first part of uh, using this, which is after the page time, we're going to use it to give a sort of an explicit uh, it was a procedure for getting a two-sided black hole from the black hole in its radiation. So the idea is if black hole evaporation is, is unitary, as we expect it is, then the radiation is related to the canonical purification by a unitary. 
So we have some unitary that's related to Ro Rand, to Ro Childe. This is the canonical purification of uh, Rho BH. Should be a little BH here, sorry. And recall the universal feature, which is that after the page time, there's a novel, non trivial, dominating QES, even for the single sided black hole, form from collapse. And this, in some sense, immediately gives us what we want, which is that canonical purification after the page time is always going to be a connected space time whenever we satisfy this general hypothesis. So here we go. We have some, this is a Cauchy slice of the uh, of the entanglement wedge after the page term. And all we have to do is we just exchange the radiation and the island by using the fact that purifications are related by unitary for the canonical purification. And this gives us immediately a two-sided connected space time. And so just using the fact that we have this non-trivial QES appearing after the page time, we immediately find that the canonical purification is always connected. This immediately gives us an implementation of ER equals EPR, the expectation of ER equals EPR after the page time that respects the entanglement wedge structure of, of ADS CFT, which was um, which would have been very puzzling and difficult to do before the uh, before we realized there was a new QES uh, in there. Okay, so this is uh, this is sort of emphasizing this point, you know, with this, with what's happening here. So whenever the page curve is correctly computed by QESs. Then we can always take this, we can uh, trace out this, so we end up just with that, apply a unitary to it, and get the, the, the canonical purification entanglement wedge, which is always going to be a semi-classical Einstein Rosen bridge connected to the old black hole. Now, sometimes when I, uh, when I talk to people about this, they ask, uh, oh, how, does the, how can the CFT tell? How does the CFT tell if this is connected? Now, in general, um, it, it's, it's sort of a well-known fact that it's uh, linear observable, linear diffeomorphism invariant observables, can't tell if a space is connected or not. Um, we often use things like the mutual information, um, but that's not necessarily valuable here as, as we will see later. So how do we, is there a way of telling that the space is connected from this perspective of the CFT? This is a bit of an aside, so let me just make sure I'm doing okay on time. Um, okay, I'm gonna briefly discuss this because I'm not doing great on time. So um, what's, a, what's a way of telling that the space-time is connected just from the perspective of the CFT? So in this case, there actually is a way of, of unambiguously saying this is connected. And uh, the way that we do this is uh, the fact that, um, let me skip a little bit here. Uh, Neta, I think we, yeah. we did start a little bit late. So okay, was, so maybe I'll say- I feel particularly rushed here. So. Okay, all right, sounds good. Um, so, so the basic idea, I'll sort of maybe say it in words and then show a few figures is that, um, this the the space time is uh, is simple after the page time in the sense that there's no uh, there's no non-trivial QES so there's no Python's lunch after the page time and the reason that that helps us is as I'll, as I'll demonstrate shortly that we can then do simple operations to shrink the black hole and then we can make it traversable using a double trace deformation and at that point we can measure correlators commutators and essentially use Maldestein and Stanford uh, Yang to test whether the space time is connected or not, using the fact that it's uh, it, now the two sides are, are coupled. So that's the, the, the sort of basic idea here. Let me, let me briefly discuss in somewhat more detail than this lightning 30 second spiel. So, um, so again, we, we want to use something like a gau jaffers wall type construction that would allow us to see if the space time is connected or not. And the way we're going to skip this, the, the basic idea is here we have the we have some some our, our canonical purification, the entanglement wedge of our canonical purification, and the fact that there's no additional QES between the minimal one and the asymptotic boundary tells us that we can actually just do something like HKLL and get a space time where the, um, the, the dominant QES is almost or essentially at the event horizon. Uh, Netta? Yeah. Is it a useful exercise? I mean, I, I, so I agree. Um, it's just, I think someone might help me to think through uh, the case where, you know, from the bulk point of view, uh, I could have done this CPT gluing uh, already before the page time using the wrong quantum extremal surface, which is already present near the horizon. And, and uh, you know, so that would clearly then not be uh, 
dual to the course grain level mm -hmm. or to the canonical purification of the state you sort of have to somehow coarse grain first to get mm -hmm. i mean yeah is that what you do you, you you would take the state you coarse grain it and then you'd find a canonical purification um so in this case here so, so no in, in the case where i wanted to know what the boundary dual is of this um of this uh, you know connected geometry that i got from the quantum extremal surface the outermost but, quantum yeah the, the, the wrong one before the page the time page time um yeah yeah, yeah that's right that's, that's that's essentially how you would do it i'll talk more about the um the pre-page time momentarily but i actually won't discuss this course graining um, great thank you mm -hmm. so um i will skip this but the basic idea again is that you can do you can use something like glorified hkll to shrink this gap and to get this minimal QES to lie, uh, to essentially coincide with the event horizon. And then at that point, this, at that point, we then say, okay, so we, we, we have this sort of low complexity space time, no Python's launch, only the minimal QES. Um, and so that we have it here and then the canonical purification here. So we have some low complexity space time with multiple boundaries and we want to, we, we then execute this procedure using HKLL, where we bring the minimal QES to lie on the event horizon. So I should say this is this was work with Jeff and Arvin uh, last year. And then we say, okay, let's couple the two signs via something like a double trace deformation. And we can ask, okay, is this is this now connected from the CFT perspective? And uh, this was discussed at length in Maldus and Stanford Yang, the types of correlators and commutators that you can look at. Near, at near boundary and interpret from the CFT perspective to tell you if your uh, your coupled boundaries are actually connected to the bulk or not. So this aside is really just to to definitively illustrate that there is a CFT sense in which this is connected as well as a an obvious bulk geometry. The global geometry is obviously a connected um, Einstein Rosen bridge. Okay. So again, this gives a way of. Uh, it's one way of diagnosing that uh, this canonically purified post-page black hole is connected. Now, just to, to, uh, to double check that nothing terrible goes wrong when you do this canonical purification, we actually constructed it. So uh, we took a, an explicit example of JT plus a CFT plus an end of the world brain. And the end of the world brain is really just here to not give us the option of throwing the radiation into the other side. So we don't have that option of, of realizing the uh, ER equals EPR. Okay, so we have this, this is a sort of an example here. This is not a flavored brain. It's not the West Coast model. It's just a standard uh, JT plus CFD evaporating black hole. And again, after the page time, we have this new QES here. And, um, and we build the canonical purification. It has uh, quite a lot of shocks. Some of them are a consequence of uh, imposing trend, uh, reflecting boundary conditions after the canonical purification. You don't have to do this. You can have absorbing ones or transparent ones here that are then coupled here, but then the sides are coupled and it's not a standard. So we just turn off the coupling. We get these shocks here, get the shocks at the QES. Um, but the space time, you know, it's well behaved. It's got this null singularities here and here, but otherwise um, it basically does exactly what Raphael, Ben and Arvin told us that the space time should do. Exactly the kind of uh, negative energy shock that was predicted uh, in their paper, but the acronal dynamic is everywhere satisfied. And indeed, this is a connected space time. Oh, I'm sorry. This was uh, this is sort of more here for Raphael to uh, to enjoy uh, with all of the all of the different expansions. <laughs> I'll just flash it here for a moment, um, and that's it. Okay. Gorgeous. Uh, Okay, so um, so before I move on to talking about before the page time, which is arguably more interesting, actually, I want to just mention briefly an application of this, which is kind of fun. So we know that Rho Rand and Rho Childe are related by a unitary. That means that anything that's a unitary invariant can be computed by a standard ADS-CFT dictionary in a canonical purification picture. So in particular, you don't need to relax the homology constraint, the island formula, if you want all you want is to just compute the, the page curve, the Neumann entropy. You can just work in the canonical purification where everything is standard, um, everything is homologous, and there's no uh, there's no complications resulting from having this piece of the space time that's uh, that's not connected to the to the boundary. So that's for the Neumann entropy and anything which is again a unitary invariant. You're going to be able to compute it using standard ADS CFT rules in the canonical purification, and they'll of course have to give you identical answer. 
as the um, as the evaporating black hole picture. And same applies to other Unitarian variants. Now, this is uh, this is yeah. Sorry, but the the um, without ever doing the canonical purification, mm -hmm. I would have thought that we could compute the page curve purely from rho black just hole. Just assume that the black hole is evaporating unitarily. Then yes, that's right. Well, I, I I'm more wondering what you know what calculation. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. I I recant my objection. All right, uh, Rafael, was that a question? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I it seems to me that you're implicitly saying that um, the the Engelhard Engelhard Wolf version of the Ryutake and Nagi prescription had originally imposed a homology constraint that was too strong and that it had to be relaxed to get islands. I I would disagree with that if that's what you wanted to say. Um, I don't necessarily want to say something that strong. Um, I would say so. If you want, so yes, yeah, so, so so I think there is a very clear sense in which um, if you just do the extremization, including the flat region, and don't worry about the fact that G Newton is not super well defined in the flat region, then you just you can just do standard QES and get the island, and it's a non-issue. Um, we don't even need a flat region, right? I mean, we we could just ask about if we collect the radiation in some corner of ADS and we ask about the entanglement wedge of, of, of a boundary region near that, mm -hmm. near that part of the boundary, uh, I'm just going to try to localize it in some angle. And uh, then after the page time, I think the, the QES prescription tells us unambiguously that we have to include an island. Um, I mean, just as, as, a, as a fact of topology, there's nothing wrong with having a disconnected region that... Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's... I would say it's a maybe it's not a departure from the QES formula, but it certainly is a departure from things like bulk reconstruction and you know the modular flow where we flow. I mean, you need a different type of modular flow, like Yiming Cheng had, uh, in order to flow things out of the island. So it's not quite. Nobody's. I mean, the, the question of how you reconstruct is a completely orthogonal question, right? I, this I, is I, a very simple thing that just tells you what bulk region is dual to some boundary region. How you how you implement the duality is a much more subtle question. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and, so the, and I agree that that you know lunches are complicated, but mm -hmm. even in that respect, islands are not particularly special. Um, so, it, I guess it depends on whether you want to call the island formula a different formula from the QES formula. I actually tend to agree with you that they're not they're they're actually the same formula. But uh, for those who think that they are different, here's a way of mapping them to the same thing. Um, that, that's how I would mark it. I tend to agree with you though, Rafael. Okay, then I'll stop complaining. <laughs> um, one uh, one kind of interesting aside that I guess I don't know um, entirely what to make of it. So if there are any comments on that, that would be uh, fun to hear. The the map. Uh, so if if we think of the um, the QES in the, the post page QES as being justified by um, replica wormholes and incurring a factorization problem in Euclidean time, then we can think of the canonical purification as having a sort of more standard Lorentzian factorization problem where you have, the, you have these two sides, the CFT factorizes, but we can have observables like Daniel Harlow's Wilson line that don't factorize between the two. And so this, this map between them appears to exchange the Euclidean factorization problem for the Lorentzian factorization problem. Um, I, I suspect those two problems are really one and the same, but I, uh, I, I don't know how to justify it, but this is sort of an interesting, uh, an interesting quirk, quirky aside to, uh, to note. Now, this is another uh, and, and sort of a fun geometrization of, uh, of something that we definitely expect to happen. So we expect that a, if we send in a signal, so if we turn on something in the radiation after the page time, we turn on some operator in the radiation after the page time, is going to affect the black hole interior if that operator is sufficiently high complexity. Uh, but if we turn on some uh, black hole, so some um, operator into radiation before the page time, you know, doesn't have to affect the black hole interior. So one of the uh, one one nice thing about the canonical purification of the evaporating black hole is you can kind of see it very very geometrically. So um, so here we have we turn on some unitary in the canonical purification. This corresponds to turning on something into radiation. It's probably something very high complexity. It's not something local, but that's that's fine. And before the page time, it doesn't do anything to the entanglement wedge of the black hole. 
But after the page time, this is connected. So we get a Merrill wall style uh, situation where we can turn on some unitary here. We can turn on some operator in the radiation. And we can see geometrically that that operator is going to interact with an observer that we sort of threw in uh, from the black hole. So again, it's something that we definitely are sure it happens, but it's nice to see such a clear geometric demonstration of it. All right, so that, that more or less concludes the discussion after the page time. So uh, let's talk about what happens before the page time. So let's just do a canonical purification before the page time without any kind of coarse graining. So here we have a Cauchy slice, and we are just going to trace out the bath, and then we're going to canonically purify this thing. So we get a just two disconnected uh, black holes. This is maximally extended, so there's no way of gluing them together. There's the empty set, but we CPT conjugate around the empty set. We just generate another different space time altogether. No. Yeah. I, I was under the impression that there was you know, some very, very small Planck size quantum extremal surface that differs from the empty set before the page time? Is that um, true or no? Even if it's there, I mean, there, so if it, there, there are other quantum extremal surfaces in there before the page time for sure, uh, but they're not dominant. So here we're talking about the dominant QES. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to worry about coarse graining right now. I'm just mm -hmm. just taking the original, the statement canonically purifying it. So let's take a look at the page curve here. Um, and let's pick two times, T1 and T2, one before the page time and one after the page time, such that the Neumann entropy of the black hole is the same. Now, so we have two semi-classical holographic space times. They both have two boundaries. They both have the same Neumann entropy for the page time and after the page time. After the page time, we know the canonical purification is connected. And before the page time, we know the canonical purification is disconnected. So, is this a counterexample to the space-time emergence from entanglement? Uh, what's the relevant difference between the post-page state and the pre-page state that makes the latter disconnected and the former connected? So what's, well, what, there's one obvious difference that sort of jumps out at you as soon as you think about this for five minutes, which is that the post-page black hole is maximally mixed and the pre-page black hole is not maximally mixed. So the thermal entropy at T1 the time before the page time is much larger than the thermal the Neumann entropy of the black hole. And the thermal entropy at T2 is approximately the same. So we have a possibility here that maybe in order to have entanglement building space time, you need not just large order one of Reggie Newton von Neumann entropy, but you also need the von Neumann entropy to be close to the thermal entropy. Maybe that's what is necessary for entanglement to build space time certainly appears to be consistent with this pre-page and post-page uh, for canonical purifications. But actually this is a red herring because we can, we can throw in pure states. So um, let's just throw a pure state in at t equals t2, so after the page time. And this is not going to change the von Neumann entropy because it's a pure state, um, but now the state is at t2 is not maximally mixed anymore. So um, we can also, if you're worried, you say, oh, this is a very small effect, you can amplify it by working with a large number of matter fields. You can say, oh, but maybe if you work with a large number of matter fields, this actually changes the quantum extremal surface. Maybe you don't have the same type of canonical purification anymore. But even if it moves the quantum extremal surface, it doesn't change the von Neumann entropy at T2. And that means the von Neumann entropy of rho T2 is the von Neumann entropy of rho T2 prime, which is the state obtained by throwing in a pure state. It's always going to be less than the von Neumann entropy of the vacuum of, of the empty set, because well we know this is smaller than von Neumann entropy of the empty set because we have a new dominant QES, so this must also be smaller, and um, and that means that even if including a large number of matter fields somehow changes the QES, it's still going to be non-trivial after the page time. So there's always going to be a non-trivial dominant QES even if we add a large number of matter fields, we add this pure state in, and so the canonical purification is going to remain connected. But now we have a large difference between the thermal entropy and the von Neumann entropy. So this idea that the maximal, being close to the maximally mixed state is the thing that distinguishes between the pre and post page canonical purifications. And that is what's important for diagnosing connectivity doesn't seem to go through. But, um, but if you just send in a lot of material mm -hmm. and a horizon become much bigger, and then QES become not at the horizon, but it's a smaller portion. 
of the mm -hmm. collapsible interior. So that means that if you focus on that, those degrees of freedom uh, uh, describing inside the QES, that's pretty much maximally entangled. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, as a black hole, it's not maximally entangled at all, but the connection is also not at the horizon anymore. It's only a small portion. So, it, I mean, uh, it, it doesn't matter for the canonical purification, though, because then we're looking at the black hole row capital VH, which is not going to be maximally mixed. Yeah, so yeah, the bulk yeah. stayed near yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I know. I know, but it's, it's uh, uh, but then uh, the connection is also not the whole space time in some sense. It's just a very small portion of the space time. I, I don't I don't agree with that. Um, the QES is going to be non-trivial, have the same amount of generalized entropy that it did before. And when we canonically purify the CPT conjugate around it, we're still going, we're still going to get a, a wormhole. Yes, so, I agree. Yeah, so I, I don't think it- No, it, no, no, I'm not saying, yeah. It's the same size of a wormhole, mm -hmm. but the black hole is much bigger because it's um, in your state. Sure, but I don't think that matters. It does, it does, I mean, we're, we're interested in diagnosing connectivity here. And uh, it doesn't really matter how large the, the black hole is for this, uh, for this purpose. I mean, yeah, I mean, we want to make it larger because we want the thermal entropy to be, to be much bigger than the von Neumann entropy. So we can have an illustration of a black hole where, which is, where, where, the, where it's not close to the maximally mixed state, but it's still connected. Oh, yeah, OK. OK, but I, I thought that your statement is that uh, to, to have a connectivity, you just because you can have not just a black hole, you have a bunch of other uh, exterior stuff then you can say the same thing. So the connectivity means that uh, given the relevant degrees of freedom, the most of the relevant degrees of freedoms are entangled. Okay, otherwise, um, otherwise you could say it's a black hole, okay? Not, uh, you have a black hole at the old, old black hole and then you send in pure state, yes, true, but you don't even need to send in. Your system is much, much bigger system. And then of course your, your entanglement. Oh, sure, sure, you, you, can, you can do it that way too. Yeah, that's yeah, right, you can also do it that way, yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, so here, so so okay, so difference the distance from the maximum and mixed state doesn't doesn't do it for us. What about complexity? The prepage state is highly complex, has this non-trivial, non-minimal QES. The Python's lunch. The postpage state is simple. I mean, what's going on here is that we actually need high complexity. Um, but you you do expect to be able to construct uh, you know high complexity connected wormholes. We don't think that high complexity is the thing that prevents us from connect constructing connected wormholes. So there's a, a very nice example um, by Golam, Juriachi, and Verlinde, where they constructed these partially entangled states that uh, at the time they didn't realize it, but they have like a very significant Python's lunch. Or a very simple example is just a three boundary wormhole. So this is the connected space time, but of course, any two of these, there you're going to have these uh, the non trivial QES, non minimal QES that are non trivial. You'll have a Python's lunch in this case. And you certainly expect that this is, a, this is a connected geometry. So high complexity shouldn't be the thing that we use to diagnose if the space time is, if the wormhole is connected or not. Okay, so here's the, let me sort of state the puzzle here. So um, the, the comparison between the pre and post uh, page canonical purifications, the comparison tells us that we can have two states with the same von Neumann entropy, the same large order one of Virginia Newton von Neumann entropy, both of them are dual to well-behaved semi-classical bulk space times. They can result from equally mixed uh, rho BHs. They can both be high complexity. And uh, one is connected and the other does not have to be connected. So um, there's a particularly, in, this, is, this is hopefully starting to make you worry about entanglement as, a, as the architect uh, of space time. It certainly has me worried. So there's a particularly instructive example that we uh, that we were able to build analytically in uh, JT plus the CFT. So now let's, let's, let's actually work with a two-sided black hole since we're working with JT. I guess the singularity should really be null, but that's okay. Um, we'll take a two-sided black hole. It's evaporating into a reservoir. And we're going to work with the entanglement wedge of LR. So not the entanglement wedge of L or R, but the entanglement wedge of LR. So complete Cauchy slice. It's inextendable the QES before the page time is the empty set. And then we can canonically purify that. We'll get two disconnected space times where the bulk state is entangled between them. So we have LR and then R tilde, L tilde, L, R, L and R are connected, R tilde and L tilde are connected. R and R tilde are not connected, L and L tilde are not connected, but there's a lot of entanglement uh, between these two. Now let's let's take a look at the post page case. 
So after the page time, these don't have the same QES anymore. This, this is unchanged. This is now is this new uh, novel one. And we can canonically purify. Now we find that L is connected to L tilde, R is connected to R tilde, and L is not connected to R, L tilde is not connected to R tilde, and we have, but we have a lot of uh, entanglement. And of course, we can we can pick rho bh to have the same von Neumann entropy uh, in each of those cases. But in some cases, R and L are connected. In some cases, L and L tilde are connected. So there's clearly a different um, quality of the, the there's some property of the state that distinguishes between the type of uh, correlations between R and L and L and L tilde. Um, but those correlations are not captured by the bipartite entanglement. So they, we have this swap in connectivity in the two-sided black hole, where it goes from having L and R connected to having L and L tilde connected before the page time versus after the page time. And so the, the question that I'd like to ask all of you, since we don't have an answer to this, is at what observable quantity in rho L, R, L tilde, R tilde, determines whether it's L and R that are connected or L tilde and R tilde that are connected, which what is the, the correct quantity to look at to actually build space time uh, between the boundaries? Netta, yeah. uh, earlier in your talk, you, you proposed that, um, you know, traversable wormhole type tests are a good diagnostic of mm -hmm. whether you have a connection. So you might have to clean out the space time first a little bit to get rid of extra stuff. And then, um, and then you check if you can, if you can send a signal across. Mm -hmm. Why why doesn't that count here? You seem to apply um, a more stringent test now. Oh sure sure it 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 does work here. Um, it's a test. It's a diagnostic, but it doesn't tell us. It, it, it's too coarse grain to actually tell us what it is about the um, rho r rho l l tilde state versus the rho r l state that actually builds the space time. So, I mean, we could we could define it and say, oh, it's just it's 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 when these correlators do that. But I think that's that's not nearly as instructive as oh, it's when the von Neumann entropy is a certain order of magnitude. And so, what is the what is building the space time here? Um, you could say it's those core it's, it's just those commutators and correlators that are building the space time. But um, I think that's I, I would prefer a quantity that is actually you know there's some order of magnitude that quantity is something fundamental about the state. Um, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, so you could have asked the same. I mean, we could go back to just the, the, the case with two boundaries and worry about this question. It's, it's, this is just another example. Which Absolutely. It's, is, it's, it's just an instructive example. Yeah, yeah, that's all. And you can, it, it's nice because you can look at it analytically. So there's a hope of maybe you know, teasing out some additional features, but it's just an instructive example. OK, so um, I am OK, I'm going to take a few more minutes and sort of uh, say a few more things about ER equals EPR and uh, that potential diagnostics. Um, so there are a lot of interpretation, a lot of derivations of ER equals EPR, and they, a lot of them are sort of careless. And they say enough entanglement means this is some classical ERB. And of course, we know that this is, this is false um, by our, our counterexample. Now, of course, we started out with a somewhat different interpretation of ER equals EPR which was um, if there's enough entanglement and there exists a probably high complexity factorizing unitary that will map the system to a semi-classical geometry with an Einstein-Rosen bridge. So in particular, one of the new things we've learned is that not all semi-classical realizations of the state are necessarily connected. Maybe then there exists a unitary that actually takes our pre-page canonical purification and maps it to a connected bulk. A factorizing unitary, because an unfactorizing one is kind of trivial. Um, now, in particular, I think this is yeah okay. For, so, for, in order for this to be true, um, it has to be the case that the unitaries actually can't can't be sensitive to whether the prepage time state is connected or disconnected. And so, we tried to test this. This is not in the paper because it was a failure. Um, we said, okay, let's find a unitary, some kind of a unitarily invariant quantity that can tell. And we tried everything from distillable entanglement to squashed entanglement to measures of entanglement that I'd never heard of before. And uh, we couldn't find anything that actually could tell whether the space time before the page time, specifically in the example we worked with, uh, was connected or not, that was a unitary invariant. And so this is 
potentially suggestive, maybe we just haven't found the right quantity yet, but it's potentially suggestive that there is in fact some factorizing unitary that will map the prepage time state to a connected geometry. So potentially um, ER equals EPR is safe, even though entanglement build space time is not. So I have a summary, but then I have quite a few uh, speculative things to say. So, um, so su uh, quick summary. What do we do? We construct the canonical purification of an evaporating black hole, both before and after the page time. And there's an operational definition of connectedness, but only for simple states. This doesn't work if there's a Python's lunch. Now, we have a connected space time for the single sided black hole, canonical purification after the page time. And the canonical purification is disconnected before the page time. We have this connectivity swaps for the two sided black hole. Now, after the page time, the protocol gives a prescription for realizing. Um, and a prediction of ER equals EPR. And before the page time, maybe you could imagine realizing ER equals EPR by factorizing unitary, um, although I don't know uh, how we'd go about doing that at this point. So um, I think this uh, the upshots I made quite clear, so let me just uh, briefly speculate. Okay, so question. Something I missed, okay. So uh, question, so what actually builds space-time connectivity? Um, so what makes the connected space-time special over the disconnected space-time, the pre versus post page canonical purifications? And what determines if LR is connected versus LL tilde? Uh, so the, the unitary that maps the post page radiation state to the canonical purification, one, it's just a question, it acts in some sense like a decoding protocol. It takes a very high complexity state and it maps it to a state that doesn't have a Python such, so a very low complexity state. So is there a way of sort of understanding this map for those things that are not Unitarian variants? Is there a way of thinking of this map as some kind of a, an actual decoding protocol? Um, I don't know, open question. Another possibility is that multipartite entanglement for the, uh, is, is important for building space-time even in a bipartite state. So here's an observation that I don't know how to quantify it. But the prepage state is heavily correlated with itself. There's a lot of internal correlation. There's high complexity states, very heavily correlated with itself. It's not correlated with the radiation yet. So maybe there's some measure of the internal correlations of the system with itself, maybe multi-part and entanglement of different subsets of the system, that an appropriate way of saying whether it's connected to something else or not. And I just want to mentioned the work of Akers and Rath, who also hail from Berkeley, um, who and, and they, they worked in the purely classical limit, they considered subregions only, but they found this very interesting statement that just looking at various proposals for the entanglement wedge cross section, uh, for those proposals to be correct, like the um, entanglement of purification, reflected entropy, uh, these actually require holographic states to have uh, primarily tripartite rather than bipartite entanglement. And so uh, again, this is in a somewhat different regime. They use properties that are only true classically, but it does raise the question, maybe we should be looking at multi-partite entanglement in addressing this question. And um, th there's a, a potential toy model for trying to answer this. I can't resist having the smiling pair of pants in my talk. So um, there is a sort of classical uh, model for the evaporating black hole that uh, Chris and Daniel and I constructed which uh, essentially every Hawking quantum is, is, a, is a separate wormhole here, which is very, very small. These gammas are very small. And eventually they become the dominating. Uh, so they, they start out dominating for these. Eventually there's a swap in, the, in which one of these dominates. And so you could imagine studying multipartite entanglement in sort of the RT example in this very simple case and ask if we can tell the difference between a disconnected case, which is really where these are quantum wormholes, is not really connected, and the connected case. So this is a sort of an idea for potentially probing this. And um, oh, there's one more talk, one more, one more uh, slide. So uh, one last thing, which is super speculative, but I think kind of interesting. Um, we may, there's a potential for thinking about this from the perspective of, of bulk reconstruction. Um, maybe we should ask instead of is the space time connected, you know, can we reconstruct the space time and how do we see that it's connected from a reconstruction perspective. And if we want to do that, then we have to work in, in a code subspace because ADS CFT is a quantum error correcting code. And in particular, it's an approximately quantum error correcting code, a quantum, approximate quantum error correction. And it was very beautiful work by uh, Patrick and Jeff, where they showed that the only 
you if you want to do state independent reconstruction, you have to work with the maximally mixed state in your code subspace. That's what gives you state independent reconstruction. Now, if you are given a black hole and we have access to its exterior, and then we say, okay, let's define the code subspace in terms of the set of all black hole microstates played with a smooth horizon, then the maximal and mixed state actually has a QES. And it's a, non, it's, a, it's a dominating minimal QES that's non trivial, even if the black hole is not evaporating, even before the page time. And if we canonically purify around that, then we always get a um, we, we always get a connected canonical purification. So maybe we should be thinking about the code subspace, about bulk reconstruction in this context. This is extremely speculative, and it's really just an idea. So uh, with that, I'm going to close. And thank you. And sorry for going so far over time. Thank you, Nata. Uh, we still have, yeah, John, I see you or raise your hand. So we can Thanks. Thanks for the talk, Nata. Very interesting. Um, a couple questions, I think, that are going to lead somewhere. So it's my understanding that sort of, well, before the page time, one way I can think of what distinguishes before the page time and after the page time is that before the page time, all of the entanglement in the CFT state is coming from bulk fields, from entanglement of bulk mm -hmm. fields. Yes, yes. Whereas after the page time, there's also an area contribution. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So... Do you agree? It, it, it seems to me that I could make a similar version of this puzzle without ever talking about black holes by saying, take empty ADS, put some quantum fields on it, mm -hmm. and put those quantum fields in a mixed state where the entropy gradients are mild enough that the quantum extremal surface is still the empty set. Okay. The, because then in that case, you could still have a large amount of entanglement because you're putting the bulk quantum fields in a mixed state, but you're still going to have. Uh, a canonical purification that's disconnected because the quantum extremal surface is the empty set. So, so if if what you're trying to get at um, is, I mean, it, it, yes, you can. Uh, I, I guess I, I, with, with ADS, if, when you're putting things in pure ADS, I always worry about uh, situations where, you know, you have resonances and then eventually things collapse, but right, you know, exactly. probably you can cook this up. Yeah. Um, and if, if essentially what you're saying is that the, um, the, the important difference between the two states is whether the expectation value of the area operator is zero or not, mm -hmm. then I agree with you. The, the, the issue, and we, we sort of tried to pursue that. The problem right. is that there isn't really a, um, a good general uh, definition of the area operator in CFT language that, um, that's going to, to work in this highly quantum, not highly, with the semi-classical case where we have these large entropy gradients. Now that said, there's been some preliminary work by um, Alex Bellin and collaborators, I forget who else was on that paper, where they looked at initial, um, so just, I mean, it was just for perturbations, but it was a case where indeed the QES was different from, um, from the classical extremal surface. And so it was sort of a non-trivial case and they looked at the area operator and um, and they did find that they could identify it in those cases. Yeah, so this was a uh, Sean Colin Ellerin, and he gave a talk about it last week at the seminar. Oh, okay, okay, great. <laughs> so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah. that, I think that's very promising. And if that could be uh, generalized okay. to apply to these cases, then um, that would certainly be one way of definitely piecing apart the, 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 these two examples. Now that said, it does. It's I don't see that it's going to answer the question of. Um, the, the 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 four boundary to piecewise connected black hole. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, but yeah, but at least it would certainly begin to tell us the difference between them. I agree. Let me pose the last small part of this question, which is, I mean, if I can think in this naive example where there's no black hole, maybe I can, you know, I tune some quantum fields so that there's a large mixed state that doesn't collapse or something. Um, it occurs to me that the situation where you have bulk fields in, in a high entropy mixed state is exactly the kind of situation that was discussed in um, Chris and Jeff's paper about leading order corrections to the quantum yep. extremal surface prescription because you have incompressible matter and things like that. And I wonder if those issues could play any role here. I don't have anything more to say about it than that, but if, if you know, it, having to be more careful or more thoughtful about the quantum extremal surface formula and what it means to canonically purify when you have a large amount of bulk entanglement, mm -hmm. that could be, you know, 
I wonder if you have any response to that vague thought. Um, so I think it's, it's, I certainly think it's interesting, especially that, that piece of work has not been explored to maximum capacity so far. Um, I, I'm not very doubtful of the applicability of the QES formula in this specific example of, you know, JT plus a CFT, where we sort of engineer right. the states very precisely. So I, I think that in that case, we don't expect to have um, to incur these corrections, even lead, at leading order that they that they found. So possibly you could say this is very fine tuned. And maybe I think, in fact, one of the things that they showed was that for, for a fairly large class of states, we, you do expect those corrections. Um, but at least I would I think the, the question stands regardless of whether um, those corrections play or not. And I don't, because I, I think in the particular case that we have constructed from JT plus CFT, we, we do expect that these are not states where we need those leading order corrections. Right. Right, because it's just the hard hogging vacuum in the JT situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot, Nada. Yeah. Yes, Nari also had uh, his oh, yeah. hand raised. Yeah. Hey. Um, so I kind of feel like uh, this is what I've been kind of doing, like as a constructing black hole from single sided to the interior. Okay. And uh, following that, the condition you need is something like uh, um, in the basis of uh, uh, a local quantum field, the entanglement should be generic, or state which is purified must be generic under the constraint of generic energy constraint and possibly angular momentum and gauge charge. And it has to be super generic because you clearly see that uh, uh, because then uh, uh, a canonical purification or whatever, it will lead to almost some of it double thing. And you clearly see that why that, that need to be the case because if the entanglement entropy is even fixed, if those entanglement entropy is purely from say neutrino sector, but not from photon or not from electron, how come you can build the space time, which is the connected, connected to all the low energy species? So it's clearly just a single number of entanglement entropy or von Neumann entropy between the bipartite system is not enough. This, this bipartite system may be totally confined in neutrino. And only neutrino has, has, has a bipartite entropy and everything else is a pure in one side. So uh, to, to view this as a space time, you really have to be a totally generic state under just a, a basic constraint. And, and so that's related with the fact in quantum gravity, you don't have any global symmetry, like you know, keeping some structure. So uh, dynamically, horizon can do that. But uh, if you don't do it dynamically, you prepare the state, then the state has to be, entanglement should be quite generic, namely same temperature for all the low energy species and everything. And that's, that's the condition. <laughs> at least uh, 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 sufficient or, I don't know if it's sufficient or necessary, but, but at least this condition has to do something, right? Because you, you can see only low energy species, one species just entangled, it's clear that uh, that doesn't lead to any connected to, to other space. And I, I agree that, um, that we certainly need a, uh, a more fine tuned quantity than the von Neumann entropy, something that is, sensitive to other correlations. That's one of the reasons that was so bringing up multipartite or I mean maybe something more sensitive. As Raphael mentioned earlier, the, these commutators and correlators seem to be sensitive to that, at least in space times without a Python's lunch. So um, I mean I, I think at the end of the day we, we we've sort of up until now we've dealt with cases that were fairly simple. And so the phenomenon entropy was in some sense enough at leading I mean not leading order. But uh, as we're dealing with good quantum fields that have somewhat different behavior, we have to look at more at finer uh, at finer quantities. Yeah, but by the way, that should be kind of basis dependent in the following sense that you have to have because locality or space time has to do with uh, 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 have to do with the classifying space uh, degrees of freedom in a space time in such a way that the Hamiltonian is only nearest neighbor interaction. Otherwise, the concept of space time or local space time doesn't exist anyway from the beginning. So you are taking that kind of basis. And in that basis, and in that basis of the location and the species, in that basis, uh, entanglement should be generic. So you really have to uh, 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 get that structure to 
to build like extending a space time, you need some uh, genericity in, 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 in that basis. So you can characterize that by like a multi-partite entanglement, probably if it's not the three by the three by type or four, it's or not grade, like that. Uh -huh. It's just really you have to be the position by position or something you can do something local in one side. So in that sense, my guess is that entanglement entropy is a lower bound uh, uh, or necessary condition for the connectivity. So your conjecture that if you do like uh, like U black hole cross U radiation, you can always create if you do this uh, uh, both sides because then you can just shuffle both sides and you can uh, uh, have a local property and if you have a local property and make it a generic entanglement, then you will be connected. And that that's why I kind of felt like your example of pure state is just sending huge pure state and making black hole bigger that you can claim as a before page time. But the part of it can be still connected because it's just a, a specific way that, that it was very small portion. It was already, already your QES, your, your construction gate connection. And it's just the purely, purely sending things, make it black hole bigger. And that big black hole is not connected, but it's the portion interior core is still connected, as you said. So, um, so if you do arbitrary unitary in both sides, Probably, uh, and, and that's the probably meaning of ERE uh, that, that, I think that, that, that I'm pretty sure that's what Juan and Lenny would say. Yeah, really and, and you also them. said that. I, you also said that, but I think that's that's probably uh, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I don't know. A chance to be high chance to be right. Yes, it was, it was great talk. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, is there one more quick question for Nara? If not, uh, let's thank Nara again. Thank you very much, Nara.